Hi everyone, Macomb County Executive here, uh, Mark Hackle. We're at our Comtech Center, Communications Technology Center. Uh, we've been at the thick of this COVID-19 thing for quite some time, uh, a few weeks, and we got our emergency activation team together and you know, trying to make sure that emergency management is up and running with all the different aspects that touch what goes on here in county government. This is our Comtech Center, Communication Technology Center. Down below you may hear some people talking, that's the dispatchers. Please fire EMS. This is where a lot of response, anytime somebody calls 911, this is where it's happening. So we just want to update you on a few things that are going on. This is John Paul Ray, he used to be the uh, the director of our planning and economic development department here in Macomb County, but he's now one of my deputy executives. And uh, again, very helpful in this process. We just want to touch on a few issues uh, that uh, you know have come to the attention of the public, kind of give you our thoughts on it, but also leave it for your thoughts as well. And one of those things is they keep talking about the social distancing, yes. and I'm noticing people are feeling like you know they're becoming socially disconnected. And mm -hmm. so there's a new term coming out, and that's just be social, but uh, keep that personal distance from one another. Absolutely. You know? It's critical in these times to not only have connections to those that you love, but stay connected to the community. And it's interesting how a lot of those technological resources and social media is being more helpful to pe keep, pe keep people connected. You know, it's, it's interesting you say that. We used to be very critical of kids, yeah. you know, when uh, they're on their computers or, you know, FaceTiming and TikTok and all those other things that I'm not that familiar with, but I hear, hear the kids talking about all the time. And uh, now I think there's kind of a, a gratitude on behalf of adults or parents. These kids are at home, they have somewhere to go and some way of communicating with one another because let's face it, I mean, a lot of these play dates have been kind of diminished too. Yeah. We're not bringing our kids around other kids. It's a, it's very interesting times and very kind of surreal, if you will. The great thing too is around the county, a lot of the school districts, teachers have been pointing things out there for students to go, whether it's a reading hour or whether it's a math tutorial or something like that too. And also a lot of authors and artists from around the country are posting things to keep kids engaged and also keep their minds going. Yeah. And I I'm understanding even like the zoo. I think they've already done it. So you and I talked about this yeah, earlier, yeah. but I think the zoo has already done it, Detroit Zoological Society. Uh, they actually have something where you can tour the zoo and they have some kind of a connection. You can go online. So I'm going to talk to our friends at the DIA and see if they'll do that as yeah, well. Yeah. We'll try to get them My kids involved. gave me a rundown of what hippos eat yesterday too. Yeah. So <laughs> helpful on that front. That's all good. So again, we're, we're grateful at least social media is out there for the kids to have some connectivity with it because we don't know how long this is going to go on. This can go on for some time. Um, you know, I, I want to pivot on uh, one of the other issues. I get a lot of emails and text messages just a lot of friends are texting me because of you know this uh, thought somebody had put out on social media, uh, speaking of social media, about a rumor that uh, the president may be doing a national shutdown for a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. and I think it all had to do you know with that uh, that Stafford Act, and people were concerned about that. Yeah, it's and been interesting not only the personal calls that we're receiving, but also even the inquiries through you know our COVID resources out to the public, and then also into the website and intake. Look, this isn't even on the conversation of the governor. She said this morning through the news, and we're tracking all those inquiries. So if anything should come in, you will hear from reputable sources like the county executive and other people in our EOC. Yeah, and I seriously doubt that's going to happen. I, I haven't got a call from the governor saying, you know, we're going to shut the state down, uh, you know, where there's going to be mandatory uh, shutdown, people staying in homes. I'm not, I'm not hearing that, and uh, well, I haven't yet got a call from the president either. Uh, he has not called me to tell me he's going to be doing it at a national level. In fact, I think there has been some conversation already uh, with the, I guess we will, national media, kind of did some backtracking on that rumor and yeah. found out that there was a source and somebody did post that on their Facebook and they're not able to get a comment from that person. They shut that down. Uh, so I really seriously don't think that is a, uh, uh, a real issue to worry about. I mean, there's enough panic going on right now and uncertainty where people are going to the grocery stores and you know, taking up all the toilet paper and meat from the meat counters. And, yeah. you know, we've had to try to figure out how do, how do the food supply uh, sources kind of uh, deal with that right now. And it's been somewhat of a challenge. And Mark, as you said, too, it's absolutely critical in these times, too, to still engage the local business community, whether you're doing carry out or those types of things. Those businesses are still there serving the public. So make sure to reach out to them and see what type of services they have available for you and your family. Yeah, and we're doing some, uh, some of that stuff, too. Uh, I know the schools are. Macomb yep. Community Action, uh, That's uh, they, they help out in many different areas to try to get people the resources they need. Uh, uh, but one of the things we're finding the schools are doing is still providing that food uh, for people at different drop-offs or locations uh, that people can actually pick it up. In fact, they're taking some into the neighborhoods because when we closed the school down, when yep. the, governor's, the governor did, and for the right reasons, uh, there was an immediate uh, need that we had to fulfill. And that's trying to get, figure out how do we get food to the kids. And the school districts here in Macomb County are doing just that. In fact, they're doing a pretty remarkable job. Been champions. Every single school district around the county is delivering meals to uh, children around the county every single day. And they're working very closely with our community action agency ensuring that our 63 local food pantries are also fully stocked on that end. Yeah, and, and, and interesting enough, there are certain things that we can't shut down
town. Um, you know, when it talks about you know getting food to people and trying to figure out how do you help that, I, I get calls from people wanting to know you know if you're going to shut down county government. You know, let alone you know this this lockdown for the entire state or for the country. It just can't happen. If you stop and think about it, from a county, we can't just shut our doors. Sure, we can probably close off some facilities from access from people. But what I mean by that is there's still going to be, let's just use for example, criminal justice. We still have to figure out how we deal with prisoners in a county jail. We still have to figure out how do we deal with the normal day calls that we're getting on 911 Absolutely. for incidents and things that are happening. So you got to realize there's supportive services that feed into that, you know, whether it's a prosecutor's office, the courts, um, even things like IT to make sure it's still running and operational are very, uh, very much needed and necessary to help support that type of service. And that's just one area. Yeah. Roads department, health department, yeah, we absolutely. can't shut that down right now. I mean, those yeah, are it's critical not only with roads to make sure that signals are working and traffic management, and as you just highlighted, our health department working in lockstep with our state and federal partners to get all the people throughout Macomb County the most critical and reliable information. And that's that's why we're using not only these digital formats with the county executive, but getting you the most critical information at the most opportune times. And so they're trying to find different ways of providing services that maybe not be the most critical, but whether it's a clerk's office, treasurer's office, there's things that we can do even internally, if it's a health department, uh, you know, needing something from IT, how are we doing it, but kind of like the flattening the curve term mm -hmm. we keep talking about, even internally we're trying to figure out how do we flatten that curve but still being able to provide services to support those critical services that the public is still going to need. And uh, we have to try to figure out how do we respond to that. So internally, we're working out our, I guess, uh, opportunities to try to figure out how we lessen that contact people are having with one another, uh, keeping them safe. But uh, at the same time, set, you know, we, we cannot just uh, shut down county government. Um, you know, so you know, kind of plan ahead. If you're thinking about going to the clerk's office, treasurer's office, or elsewhere, uh, you might want to make a phone call, make a determination, you know, if, uh, if you need to, uh, if there might be some kind of alternative service that's available online, and even for your local municipalities, that, that would play into that as well. It's the same concern that you Absolutely. might have there. So, but uh, interesting enough, uh, we do talk about the Macomb Community Action, some of the support that they're giving to the community. Uh, we have a hotline that's out there for people that might need some services from our food pantry, senior assistance people are looking for, and even uh, some of the uh, children or family services that uh, they're requiring. So there's a hotline out there, and it's, uh, it's a Monday through Friday available. There, people will be there to staff those, to answer those calls if you have a particular concern dealing with a food pantry um, and or senior assistance and or family or child assistance. And that number is 586-469. 6999. So 586-469-6999. And uh, again, the folks at Macomb Community Action are doing a great job of trying to the case at least workers, keep it going. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. The caseworkers will be there, whether it is a need in your family, whether it is a resource that you need to get a hold of. By calling that line, we will get you in lockstep with critical partners. They can get you the resources you and your family need. It's a great outlet. It's a great person to be there to talk you through whatever situation or challenges you, your family, or friends might meet. And it's another reason why county county government will be operational and will be there to serve the public. Yeah, we're trying to get that out. And again, the best uh, way of doing that is uh, communicating right now through social media, yep. like outlets like this right here. Uh, we do have a website available for people if they want to log on to it, macombgov.org. Uh, in fact, if you're looking particularly for the COVID-19, uh, there's information right there. Just click on that icon. It's going to give you a tremendous amount of information to be helpful in that regard. So, you know, we tend to look at, you know, society. You look back in our history, you know, even as we became, you know, the United States itself, yeah. you know, I, I tend to look at, you know, the, the, the challenges we face tend to, I believe, uh, in time, uh, unite us and, and they tend to make us stronger. But we all got to be kind of working together to try to figure out how do we solve some of those community problems and uh, we all need to be a part of it. So panic, uh, that, uh, that uncertainty, uh, we understand that that comes into play and uh, unfortunately there's some people that feed off of that uncertainty and that panic uh, trying to create more and uh, you know whether they're profiting off of it or because you know they get some kind of other excitement out of that, uh, I'm not sure. But uh, the reality is there are people out there that want to be helpful, they want to be part of the solution. Uh, here here in the county, we're going to stay open to try to figure out how do we provide you know that support for the community. But we need your support too. So social distancing, I guess the terminology they use, I tend to look at more of a personal distancing. Yeah. Stay social, have those conversations with people from time to time. Uh, but again, try not to get too uh, worried about the things that are going on, and uh, we're going to keep you updated as much as we can uh, from the county. So thanks, JP, and thank Mark, you for yeah. tuning in. Thanks for so. listening, folks. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot.